Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and for my cards today I am using one of the newer Heffy Doodle stamp sets. This is the Wingman stamp set that they um, just released here in June. And I started off with my travel stamp platform, and I have some Nina Classic Crest 80 pound solar white cardstock. And I lined up all the images in my travel stamp platform, and then I'm stamping everything with Ink on 3's Blackout ink. And because these are brand new stamps, I need to stamp them a couple times to get a good crisp, you know, good black line with them. And then when I was doing that, I realized that this piece of cardstock is big enough that I can just flip it around and get twice the images. So I was like, hmm, why not? <laughs> Might as well make more cards while I'm at it. So flip that cardstock around and then just inked up the stamps again and stamped them on the other side of this cardstock. So normally I would um, Google image search tropical birds, etc. I did think about that. I was like, oh, I should, I should do that. Get some ideas for color combos. But the more I thought about it, I was like, they, they, yeah, parrots and lovebirds and all those things. So many different colors. And I was like, you know, let's just, the sky's the limit. Let's just have fun with it. <laughs> so I made up my own color combos and kind of created my own idea of, you know, different birds because it was fun. So I'm using my Copic markers to do all the coloring. And I kept the coloring, or at least the amount of colors or shades per color fairly simple um with this first one i'm using two colors for the pinky purple kind of shade and then two for the aqua and because they're fa fairly different shades like one is quite a bit lighter than the other when blending the lightest and the darkest i you touch the tip of the lighter marker to the darker and it just picks up a bit of that darker color and it helps kind of blend when you're trying to blend between two colors that are very, very different. This helps as well as just going back and forth. Like I would put down a little bit of the aqua color and then go back with the pink and then go back with the aqua color, you know, back and forth, back and forth until like you get a nice blend. So I ended up doing that with pretty much all these images. I just kind of had some fun with experimenting and blending um, colors. So after I did the um, pink and aqua bird, I went on to do this one. And this one I did in blues and yellows and did the exact same thing. Um, kind of blended the yellows into the blue and the really pale yellow and the really pale blue blended fairly effortlessly. So then I would use those to blend out the darker shades of those colors. And again, you just go back and forth, really light little feathering strokes. Um, for me, this is fairly, I, I don't consider it easy per se, but it's just something I've been doing for years. I just don't do very often because more often than not, it takes fair to practice. It works, it works better too though on smaller images like this when you're doing very large areas. Um, trying to feather in two completely different colors, it can get a lot more difficult because it's a lot easier to see the, the blend. You can see the the marker strokes, etc. So it's just something um, you can just practice. You know, stamp out a few little images. Make sure you're using good cardstock. I get asked that a lot. Um, people that have issues with their Copic coloring and everything else. One, make sure you're using a good Copic cardstock. This Nina. Classic Crest 80 pound, um, Classic Crest 80 pound solar white. Um, this is the cover weight. This is a good one. Um, the 110 pound of this exact version is also another one I use. I just don't use it as often for coloring, but it's another great cardstock. Um, I've been seeing a lot on different forums lately. People, uh, finding other ones. There's, cause Nina makes a ton of different cardstocks. Like there's tons. And uh, another one that you come across a lot is it'll say Nina um, Exact Index, I think is what it'll say. That is not the same as this. You, It'll look similar, but it doesn't color the same. That's why this one, this Classic Crest Solar White, um, is the good one. So I don't recommend any of the other ones unless they're cardstocks like um, Copic has their own, like, Copic Ex Express cardstock. It's a good one. I don't use that either, though. Just, I prefer the Nina. Um, Simon Says Tamps 120-pound cardstock is also a really good one. That one, it, it's almost impossible to have the markers bleed through it. 
So that one's a really nice one too. I just, again, I just prefer my go-to cardstock is the Nina. This Nina 80 pound classic crest solar white. It just works the best. So whatever floats your boat when it comes to um, specifics, but I just re recommend getting a very good, good white cardstock and then a good stamping ink like this ink on three blackout um simon says stamps intense black mft has an extreme black um any of those ones are really good stamping inks that do not bleed or smear and then once you've got a good cardstock and a good black ink then it's just a matter of stamping images and practicing coloring so um yeah, there's my random little bit of Copa coloring advice, I guess. <laughs> I did list all of the colors I'd used here on the screen just um, for each bird and then I did the stand, etc. And then once I was done all of my coloring, I went in with just a white gel pen, added a bunch of highlights. Um, that's something else I get asked a lot about. With these especially, for the most part, I'm just adding highlights wherever. I'm not really following a light source or anything like that. I just like adding the little white highlights just to give that pop and um, add a little bit of texture sometimes. Like, I'll do add little dots here and there and do little things. Um, I just love how it kind of pops and just finishes off all of these images after all of that coloring. So I just kept going. I just went along and added them and then would do add them in the same areas for the same bird when I flipped everything around. And then once I was done all of my coloring, all of my little white gel pen highlights, I took the coordinating die set and taped everything into place and taped it really well. Um, Cause there's nothing worse than having your dies like shift when you run them through your die cutting machine. So I die cut all of those little images and then I'm gonna set them aside and work on my backgrounds. And since I did um, double the amount of images, I mentally was like, okay, I could do like two birds per card friend. I have, you know, four main images, etc. I'm going to do four cards. So I have four pieces of white cardstock and this time this is the Nina, um, 110 pound because I'm really liking how it takes like distress inks, distress oxide inks, etc. And I am using the unbelievable stencil from Happy Doodle. And I, what started off as originally meaning I was just going to use like most likely like one color on this stencil. And this first color I'm using is the Twisted Citron um, Oxide Ink and I'm just sponging it over the stencil and I did all four pieces. And then I cleaned off my stencil, just wiped it down, dried it. And then I decided to start rotating the stencil and adding different colors of the oxide inks. So that I get like all these layers and different colors. So I just moved my washi tape here and I just used the same washi tape. I, I've said this in other recent videos too. I'm really, really, really liking my glass mat. Um, people, I lucked out, I had pre-ordered mine. I was, you know, I pre-ordered mine within like a couple days of it being revealed. Um, Tonic is having a really hard time um, getting more to suppliers. They have been delayed again. They delayed them till June. And then I heard they're now delayed until July. So I, I have no control over it. You know, Simon says stamp, etc. They have no control over it. Everyone's just waiting to be able to get restocked with them so they can ship out orders and etc. Um, it's worth the wait, honestly. Um, and if you don't have this one or haven't ordered or whatever, like any good glass mat will work. Um, I do just have a soft spot for this one because of the, you know, the black background and the white, etc. I've done, I did a video on this when I first got it, but I'm really liking it for things like having my stencils taped to it. It just makes things easier. And also sponging over it is awesome because it's just so easy to clean. So I just kept going along and sponging the color and then I do all four with the same color. And then once I was done, I would wipe off the stencil and then I would rotate the cardstock yet again and then go on to the next color. And by doing it this way and just keeping it all like, you know, assembly line sort of style, I was able to do all four of these backgrounds really, really quickly. And I was able to just, you know, pull up my little one side of the washi tape there and it's almost like, you know, a hinge and lift it up, remove the cardstock and then put the next one in place, sponge on that ink and then go on to the next card. So I did four different layers of ink over that stencil, rotating it each time. 
and I used um, Twisted Citron, Peacock Feathers, Lucky Clover, and Squeezed Lemonade just for a fun, you know, really leafy background. And then the sentiments were die cuts from the new Heffy Doodle Thanks Wafer Die, and I had die cut some um, Doll Pink cardstock as well as some Gina K Wild Wisteria cardstock. And I die cut them multiple times and then stacking them together so that each one is three layers stacked. And I'm just using my um, multi-medium matte adhesive. These didn't take very long at all to um, stack together, just adding adhesive to the thickest areas, stacking them. And then I did that for all the cards. And then I had laid out my little birds and everything. And I realized my background was, was pretty busy with all those leaves. So I wanted the images to stand out a little bit. So I just cut down some more white cardstock into rectangles and I just sponged two of them. I sponged the squeeze lemonade um, distress oxide ink. And this is where it really like sponging off the glass mat. I, you, I just get a smoother blend. Like Tim Holtz wasn't joking when he said it's a complete game changer when you sponge off of glass versus working on a craft mat, which is what we've been doing for eons now. Um, yeah, I'm really liking it. So two I did with the squeeze lemonade, two I did with twisted citron, just sponging that color onto the edges. And that was going to be kind of my main space for these little images. And then for this little like bird stand here, I took a ancient, I have this old one eighth circle punch that I've literally had for 15 years. And I punched a little hole there so I could string through some baker's twine. And then I'm going to add my multimedia matte adhesive to the back of it. And then I can adhere that into place and then fold over that twine to the back of this little panel here. And then I just use my washi tape to tape it into place. So fold that over, tape it down with washi tape and then tape the ends down with the washi tape as well. Cause once I glue this down, no one's going to see it. So it doesn't matter. So I've got all of that adhered and then for my little birds and whatnot, I'm going to use just little 3D foam squares to adhere those to these um, rectangles. And then once I have those adhered, I decided to adhere these to my backgrounds just using some Nouveau glue. So put a thin amount of that on and then kind of center those onto my backgrounds. Once I've got those in place, I can adhere my die cut sentiments. And I'm again, just going to use a Nouveau glue, applying it just to the thickest areas of the sentiment. You don't have to coat the whole thing, um, but trying not to apply too much. I don't want it like oozing out everywhere. It does dry fairly, like it dries clear and it dries pretty much matte as well. Um, but I do try and use a lighter hand with that because you also don't need very much. And then I did some fiddling <laughs> and made a teeny little bow. Just, you know, making bunny ears, basically, and you just twist it and then, and then fiddle. You just kind of fiddle until, you know, you make this little, little tiny bow, cut the ends with my scissors, and then I just applied a good dollop of multimedia matte adhesive here, and then pressed the bow into that, and then once that dries, that bow ain't going anywhere. So, I adhered that to the top there and let that completely dry. And then off camera, I um, ended up stamping. There's two little tiny speech bubble stamps in this set. So I stamped them with picked raspberry distress oxide ink and the peacock feathers distress oxide and die cut them with their coordinating dies. And they just happen to also fit perfectly with these little foam squares. So it was quick and easy to adhere them. So all the little birds are talking love to each other. <laughs> I just thought that was really cute. So I added those to all the cards as my only embellishment. I was going to add, you know, sequins and jewels and all those things and decided not to. I had, you know, enough going on with the inked backgrounds and all the fun colors, etc. So I um, used the Nouveau glue on all of my panels and adhered them to card bases that are heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11. And they were scored at five and a half. So these are all top folding A2 size cards. So applied my adhesive, centered those onto my card bases. And then to finish off the insides of all my cards, I took the stencil and I just used my washi tape to mask around just one of the leaf images in the stencil because I didn't want um, any ink to get picked up anywhere else. I just wanted the one leaf there. So I used my washi tape to kind of mask that off. And then I just used my twisted citron distress oxide and sponged that onto the inside of all four cards just to give it a little something. So I went along, did all the insides of all four cards 
And then I took a sentiment from the Wingman stamp set and butted both of them together. And then I'm inking them up with that same blackout ink. And I'm going to stamp that on top of all of those sponged leaves on the insides of the cards. And that's going to finish off all my cards. So that is um, my video for today. This is actually part of a blog hop so celebrating Heffy Doodle's first birthday. So there will be info in my blog post with links to all the other stops on the hop, the giveaway, etc. So check out my blog post, which I will have linked directly below the video as well as all the supplies. So you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.